Good morning, friends. Um, as always, I'm excited to be with you for another week as we read through the Jesus Storybook Bible. Um, we've been reading through it all year together and we're getting close to the end. Um, and I am really loving, not that I don't love the Old Testament stories, but I'm loving the New Testament stories and what it is we're learning about Jesus, who he was, how much he loved us, and what that means for our lives. Um, I've really been enjoying reading these stories together and learning about um, who Jesus is. Um, so before we dive into our story this morning, uh, we are going to start with two things. I'm sure you can guess what they are by now, um, but I love to start the day with thanksgiving and prayer. Um, and so I want us to start with thanksgiving because it's important for us to remind ourselves that we serve a God who is good, who is kind, and who is generous, and who loves to give us good things. And it's important for us to remind ourselves of those good things. So what is it this week that you're thankful for? Um, what is something that you saw God do, something that you received, something you were able to do with someone? Um, what is it that you're thankful for this week? Take a minute and think about it. Um, and if you're by yourself, write it down. If you're with someone else, share with them. Um, this might be silly, but I'm thankful for this comfy chair this week. It's nice to sit in a comfy chair to teach the lesson today. Um, so as you're thinking about what you're thankful for, go ahead and write it down and tell it to someone else. Um, we're going to move into a time of prayer. And this morning, I want this to be a time of prayer for others. Um, a lot of times when we pray, we think of things that we need. Um, things that we need to see God do or see God heal or things that we even just need tangibly. And so today I want us to think about other people. What is it that you can pray for for someone that you know? Um, if you're with people, maybe ask someone, what can I pray for you for this morning? If you're by yourself, maybe just think about who in your life needs prayer and let's take a minute and pray for our friends. So I'm going to I'm gonna pray um, out loud, but you feel free to pause the video and pray yourself as well. Um, Jesus, we thank you for who you are, and we thank you for um, how much you love us. Um, and God, we just pray this morning for people um, in our city and in our county that are experiencing needs right now. We pray that you would... Um, provide for people that you would provide food and clothing and shelter um, but even more so God that you would provide hope and healing and love for people in our city in our county in our state and in our world God um, we love you and we pray these things in your name amen okay so I've got one more thing to do before we jump into the story I want you to pause this video and go in your house and find the thing that is most special to you. Maybe it's a stuffed animal or a favorite book or a favorite toy, or maybe it's uh, food from the fridge, or maybe it's a bath toy or a blanket, or maybe it's your mom. Um, go and find the thing in your house that is most special to you and I want you to hold on to it while we read our story. So pause the video and go find it. Okay, so now that you have the thing that is most special to you, we're gonna read our story. And I want you to just hold on to that thing as you're um, listening to the story this morning. And we're gonna, we're gonna talk about what, how that has to do with our story. So today we are reading the story from the Jesus Storybook Bible called Washed with Tears. So if you have your Bible, grab it and follow along. If you don't have one, um, you can read in the Bible Bible from Luke chapter seven. Um, you, can read, you can read along as I read the story in the Bible Bible if you would like as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and read. Washed with Tears. One night, Jesus went to dinner at an important leader's house. The important leader invited his important friends they were all just sitting down to eat when a woman walked in. She was not invited, but everyone knew who she was. Who did she think she is? The guest whispered. How dare she? The woman was a big sinner and everyone knew it. 
It was easy to see, after all, she had broken the rules and done bad things. The woman walked straight up to Jesus. She was carrying very expensive perfume. Now, the thing about perfume back then was that it didn't come in bottles. It came in jars like this. And the jars didn't, um, and the jars were made of precious stone like alabaster. But here's the catch. The jars didn't have a lid or a stopper or anything. So the only way you got to the perfume was if you broke the jar. Once you broke the jar, that was it. You had no more. Most people didn't use perfume because it was too precious. They just kept it on a shelf and looked at it. So you see, this perfume was her most precious thing in all the world. It was her treasure. So you have your most precious thing with you as we're reading, right? This woman had her most precious thing as she went to see Jesus. The woman knelt down before Jesus like he was a king. She held Jesus's feet in her hands and started to cry. Her tears fell onto Jesus's feet, washing them. She kissed his feet and dried them with her long, dark hair. And then she did something strange. She broke the jar and poured the perfume all over his feet. Everyone gasped. What a waste over someone's feet. Such expensive perfume. It smelled like lilies in a summer field. Jesus looked at the woman and he smiled at her. What she had done was the most wonderful thing just as Samuel had anointed David, God's true king, all those years before, so this woman had anointed Jesus, not with oil, but with her tears. The important people were cross. They thought Jesus should not be kind to this woman. That woman is a sinner, they grumbled. We are the good ones. And it's true, they did look good from the outside. After all, they were keeping all the rules. But Jesus could see inside people and inside their hearts. Jesus saw that they did not love God or other people. They were running away from God and they thought they didn't need a rescuer. They thought they were good enough because they kept all the rules. But sin had stopped their hearts from working properly. And their hearts were hard and cold. This woman knows she's a sinner, Jesus told them. She knows she'll never be good enough. She knows she needs me to rescue her. That's why she loves me so much. You look down on this woman because you don't look up to God. She is sinful on the outside, but you are sinful on the inside. The important people shook with anger. Jesus turned to the woman and smiled. Your sins are forgiven, he said. You trusted me and God has rescued you. Who does Jesus think he is? The important people whispered. Only God can forgive sins. They didn't believe that Jesus was God's son. The more Jesus loved people and helped them, the more the important people and leaders hated him. They were afraid people would follow Jesus instead of them. They were jealous and angry, angry enough to kill Jesus. So this story reminds us that we all have sin in our lives, whether it's sin that everyone can see or whether it's sin that's in our hearts. We all have sin in our lives. And, and what we can learn from this story is that no matter how big or how little the sin, we all need Jesus to rescue and love us. The important people in this story didn't think they needed a rescuer, but really they did. And the woman in this story, she knew she needed a rescuer. And she knew that she was sinful and that she needed Jesus. And she had such a great love for him that she gave him her most precious thing. So that most precious thing that you found in your house, the thing that's most special to you, that was like this woman's perfume. Um, when she gave it to Jesus, she couldn't give it back. So that thing you're holding, think about it as you're holding it. Could you give this to Jesus? Would this be something that if you saw Jesus face to face, would, you, would your heart jump in such a way that you wanted to give him your most special thing? Because that's what happened with this sinful woman. She saw Jesus and she knew he was the most special thing and she knew that he, she needed him. And so she took what was her treasure and she gave it to Jesus. She anointed him. She said, you are more important than this special thing. And she knew 
because she knew that Jesus was the most important thing, her heart was soft and it was changed. And Jesus was able to forgive her because she acknowledged that he was important. And see, the important people and the, the, the Pharisees, that's what they're called in this story, they weren't acknowledging that Jesus was the most important thing. They still thought they were the most important thing. And that's why their hearts were hard. And so what we can learn from this is that we can see Jesus as the most important thing and we can ask for forgiveness. And Jesus loves to give us his forgiveness. And so I want you to think about a couple of things. Like I asked, this most precious thing that you're holding, would you be able to give that to Jesus in order to show your love for him? And it's not that we have to show, we have to like give Jesus a bunch of things and show him our love in order for him to forgive us. It's that we have to ask for it and acknowledge that he's most important thing. Um, and another thing I want you to think about is do you think that Jesus' love can rescue us even when we've sinned? Even if we sin over and over again, do you think his love can still rescue us? I want you to think about that for a minute. And if you're with someone, talk about it. If you're by yourself, maybe write it down, write down and journal about it. But think, can do you think that Jesus' love can rescue us when we sin? Because this story shows us that it can. We just have to see that Jesus is the most important thing and ask for his forgiveness. So our memory verse this week, um, has it comes straight from the story in Luke chapter seven. And it's, therefore, I tell you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. Therefore, I tell you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. Luke chapter seven, verse 47. So I want you guys, I know I say this every week, I want you guys to come up with hand motions for this. Um, and I want you, as you come up with the hand motions, to send me a video because I want to learn from you guys how to memorize these verses. I am not very good at memorizing scripture. And so I want to learn with you guys. So if you guys can send me hand motions, it'll help me to memorize this with you this week. Um, so again, let me say it. Therefore, I tell you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. Luke chapter 7, verse 47. So I've got an activity for us to do today as well. Um, I love to do things that help us to remember the story and that help us to tell the story again and again. So today we are going to make puppets. I've already made my puppets. So I'm gonna show you what I did and then I want you guys to make them on your own as you end the video. You can go and make them and I want you to use them this week to tell the story to each other. You can use them to act the story out. So in our story today, we have Jesus and we have the sinful woman. So I made two puppets. I made Jesus and the sinful woman. You can make as many puppets as you want. You can make puppets for the important people. You can make puppets of the sinful woman and Jesus. Um, you can make a crowd. You could do whatever you want. Make as many as you want. These are the two that I made because they're the two that help me to remember the story. So I made these puppets out of paper bags because you can take the, if I could open it, you can open it and then you can have them talk. So you can use this as a way to tell the story to each other. I don't have enough hands to do this with. That's why it's important if you do it with someone else, one person can be one puppet and one person can be the other puppet. So I have the sinful woman here and I have Jesus. And it helps me to remember that she comes up to him and she washes his feet with her tears. And then she puts the perfume on his, you can make a perfume bottle too if you want. She puts the perfume on his feet and she dries his feet with her hair. So that's why I put some hair on her like this so that her hair could dry his feet. So these are my two puppets. I wanna see the puppets that you guys make too. So make some puppets. You don't have to use paper bags. You could use clothespins. You could use um, socks. You could use a whole bunch of different things. I use paper bags because I like how they have the mouths to talk with. Um, so I hope that this week you guys remember that 
Jesus is so important. He's the most important thing in our lives. He's more important than your most special thing that you have. And as you go into this week, I hope you can see the moments where um, you're reminded of how special Jesus is and that you can show him that love. So I hope you guys have a great week. Love you all. See you soon.